Okay, so today I want to finish off chapter 23 on ray optics, and we'll start talking by talking about lenses. These photos show some initially parallel light rays. The center one is the yellow one, and there's uh, a blue and a red one above and below it. And they enter two different kinds of lenses. The one on the left is called a converging lens because these initially parallel uh, rays will uh, bend when they go through the lens toward the optic axis such that they pass through some point over here. Uh, so they converge towards a point. Uh, the diverging lens, you've got initially parallel rays, and then they spread out away from the optic axis such that they seem to be diverging away from some point. So it's called a diverging lens. Uh, converging lens, uh, here we're seeing what is probably a circular lens, but we're seeing it edge on, so the edges here are thinner than the center. And then parallel rays come through it, hit every part of the lens, and they converge towards a focal point. And uh, we define the distance between the lens, and, or the center of the lens, and the focal point as being the focal length f. And this focal length f is a property of the lens. It might, it could be stamped on the lens, for example, as being maybe a 100 meter fo focal length lens. That would mean that if there were initially parallel rays, they would converge towards a focal point at a distance 100 millimeters. So this is, focal length is a property of the lens independent of how the lens is used. Now diverging lens, again seen edge on here, uh, maybe this is a cross section through the lens showing that it's thinner at the center than it is towards the edges. And all of these rays, if the uh, diverging lens is ground properly, all appear to be emanating from a point over here. It's a virtual focal point over where these parallel rays are. That's where these appear to be emanating from. And if you take the distance between that focal point and the center of the lens and multiply by negative 1, that's now the focal length of this diverging len uh, lens. And diverging len lenses have negative uh, focal length. But again, this is a property of the lens independent of how the lens is used. So I want to talk next about ray tracing and give you an example of that. Uh, so if you want to do ray tracing through a converging lens, which we'll do, there's three situations uh, to, to base your rays on. One is that if, if a ray is parallel, in front of the lens, then that means it's going to pass through the focal point, the far focal point, on the other side of the lens. The other uh, next point is that if uh, rays are diverging away from a focal point on one side of the lens, then they're going to end up being parallel, they'll be straightened out uh, by the lens. Any ray passing through the near focal point emerges parallel on the other side of the lens. And then the third uh, thing to note about lenses is that if a ray passes just through the center of a thin lens, it doesn't bend at all. It might uh, shift a little bit, but its direction on this side of the lens is the same as, as the direction in front of the lens. So let's actually uh, to try this out. Okay, I want to go through with you the steps for ray tracing for a converging lens. So this blue object I've drawn here is supposed to be a circular lens viewed edge on. So this is the edge of the lens, and if you look in your text, you'll see tactics box 23.2 on page 673, which shows how you do this. So first step is to draw an optical axis through uh, the center of this lens, like that, horizontal line. Um, and then you can label the focal points on either side of this lens. So here's a focal point right there and a focal point right there. That's where, if you had uh, parallel rays, they would converge. So this distance from here, uh, from this point to the center of the lens is f, and from this point to the center of the lens is also f, where f is the focal length of the lens. <coughs> okay, so third step is you represent the object as being an arrow, I'll draw this green arrow right here, uh, uh, that's upright and it has some height, I guess we can call that uh, height of the object, uh, h. Okay. And this object, I guess, is also some distance, we can call it s, away from the lens. Okay. So now we draw the three special rays from the tip of the arrow. 
So the first ray is one that's parallel to the axis on the front side. And then uh, on the other side, since it's parallel here, it, it will pass through the focal point on the other side of the lens. So it'll go something like that. Uh, second ray <clears throat> is one that passes through the focal point on the front side of the lens and then bends when it goes through the lens and therefore it is parallel on the other side of the lens, parallel to the optic axis. Something like that. And then lastly we can draw the ray that goes through the center of the lens which just doesn't bend. The center of the lens, uh, both sides are parallel so that ray just goes straight on through. Okay. So we extended these rays until they converge and now we can draw the image of the object whoop, we'll draw it in green, uh, which looks something like this. Okay. And now this has some height, uh, h prime, and it is located some distance, uh, s prime, away from the lens. Okay. And the thin lens equation says that 1 over s plus 1 over s prime is equal to 1 over f. So again, we have an object here. Uh, an image over here. So let's look at this image point a little more closely. Uh, this is point P prime where all the rays are uh, are converging and then diverging again. And so to focus an image you have to put a screen here. Okay? And if you place the screen right at this exact point you'll have a sharp well-focused image. If you put the screen a little too close then for every point in the object you'll have a little uh, a smudge or um, a circle where those rays will end up. Also, if you put the, the screen back here, then the, it'll be too far, and so again the Im image will be blurry and out of focus. So the, these rays don't actually stop unless they're blocked by a screen. They'll just again diverge away from this focal point. Uh, let's talk about magnification. So uh, we define the magnification as being the height of the object uh, divided, oh, sorry, the height of the image divided by the height of the object. And it turns out that this is equal to the object, the image distance divided by the object distance. So a positive value of m means that the this h uh, is upright, the image is upright relative to the object. And a negative value means that it's inverted. So for most of uh, what we've been doing so far with converging lenses, both the image distance and the object distance are positive. And so that's why we have uh, M is negative and we have inverted images relative to their object. But the uh, absolute value of M gives the magnification, okay? So the relative size of the image relative to the object. Let's consider putting an object inside the focal point so that uh, s, the object distance, is less than f, the focal length of this converging lens. So then if we do our ray tracing, we will take a line that goes through the focal point. It will become parallel on this side of the lens. Uh, if it's parallel on this side of the lens, it'll go through the focal point on the opposite side of the lens. And a ray through the center of the lens will continue on uh, without bending. And then we see that all these three rays appear to diverge from a point P prime, which is now in front of the lens. In fact, on the other side of the object. This is called a virtual image. Okay. Uh, the rays don't actually pass through here, but they, if you look, if your eyes are over here, you will see the image um, even further behind the lens than the actual object, and it'll be bigger than the object. And this is what a magnifying glass does. Uh, if we have some object like these keys and a keyboard right here, and we have a magnifying glass and we look through it, what we see is actually a more distant but bigger uh, image of that object. So uh, if we have only one surface uh, instead of a lens where there's two surfaces, uh, then we have basically two transparent media with index refraction N1, like perhaps air, and N2, perhaps glass or a big bowl of water or something. 
And if there's a spherical surface here uh, whose center is C and has some radius R, and uh, what we can do is find um, where we would expect an image to form. So we're trying to solve for S prime, the image point, uh, if there's an object over here at uh, object distance s. And that's solved in the textbook, and you get this equation n1 over s plus n2 over s prime equals n2 minus n1 over r, the radius of that spherical surface. And there's a sign convention that if r is positive, that is a situation where uh, that surface is convex towards the object like it is here. So this is the convex surface, the object is on this side. If we had a negative r, that would be something that's concave towards the object. If s prime is positive, that means the image is real, and it's the opposite side of the interface from the object. And if s prime is negative, that's a virtual image, as we saw before, on the same side uh, as the object. And the thin lens equation can be derived from that equation by uh, taking a lens to be two spherical uh, surfaces. So we have this thin lens equation. Um, you can solve it out that the 1 over f is equal to n minus 1 times 1 over r1 plus 1 over r2, where r2 or r1 is the radius of curvature of the first surface, surface, r2 is the radius of curvature of the second surface, and we assume that this uh, lens is, is immersed in air, where air has index of refraction 1. And then n is the index of refraction of the glass in the lens. So concave spherical mirrors, or even convex spherical mirrors, can be used to form images. So here's actually a concave mirror that's just being used to focus light. So if you have parallel rays coming along and they hit a concave spherical mirror, they will tend to converge towards a point, especially if it's a very uh, large radius concave mirror, and this is a, a small bundle of rays. Rays parallel to the optic axis reflect and pass through a point, which is called a focal point, and we say that this is a distance f from uh, the focal point to this, this point, the vertex of the, of the mirror. And then we have the, what looks just like the thin lens equation, it's called the mirror equation. So here's an object which is now further away from the, this concave spherical mirror than, the, than its focal point. Rays will diverge from here and then converge onto a real image. And if all of these uh, distances are measured now positive to the left, uh, distance between the mirror and the object is s, the mirror and the image is s prime, and 1 over s plus 1 over s prime equals 1 over f, where f is the focal length of that mirror. So uh, we can also find that the focal length is, can be found as the radius of curvature of that mirror divided by 2. Uh, and then there's a sign convention here that says that if r and f are positive, and this is a concave uh, surface towards the object, if these are negative, that's a convex surface towards the object. If s prime is positive, that's a real image on the same side as the object. And if s prime is negative, that's a virtual image on the opposite side from the object.